Hello and very welcome. My name is Dr. Lucas de Plessis. I'm a senior lecturer in the Department of Mechanical and Aeronautical Engineering at the University of Pretoria. And we're busy with the postgraduate module MSD 780, that's Dynamics, Postgraduate Dynamics, and MSD 780, that's the acronym for this module. Today is lecture 11, this is also the last lecture in our module and uh, also the last lecture of the current theme we're busy with which is um, application examples that Professor Nikravesh included in his textbook Planar Multibody Dynamics, the second edition. This is the textbook that we've been used, using throughout the module and um, we've spent seven of our 11 lectures looking at these application examples. We look at our mind map that we've been discussing in the past seven lectures. Um, in lecture, in the previous lecture, we started to look at this subsection 8.1.5, rod impacting ground. And uh, it's important just to recap and to underline the fact that in this simple example, we make use of continuous impact or contact um, as described in section 11.2 and in our previous lecture we did look at subsection 11.2.1 specifically where we considered a body contacting a rigid surface now in today's lecture uh, we will take it one step further we will look at two body contact as described in such subsection 11.2.2. Now, um, assume that the two bodies shown in 11.13 are in the process of contacting each other. Okay, and once again, um, there are three schematics presented in figure 11.13. The top one is where the two bodies are still approaching each other. The second schematic is where they make contact. And the third schematic is where there is deformation as a result of the contact. So the overall penetration that you see in this bottom schematic, um, that's indicated by delta. This is the overall penetration can be considered as the sum of the deformations of the two bodies as delta equals delta 1, which is the deformation of the first body, plus delta 2, which is the deformation of the second body. Now the force models, before I go on, let's just have a look here. The penetration is determined along the axis of contact which is normal to the contacting surfaces. Okay, this is an important point, um, and it may not be that easy to always determine this direction um, of penetration, or the plane that is normal to the contacting surfaces. But anyway, I'll touch on this again later on in today's lecture. Now, if we go on the force models of equations 1131 through 1134 can be implemented between the two bodies to determine the contact force. Now, these equations were discussed in our previous lecture. I've repeated them here. I've copied them again here in this portion of the mind map. Um, so, we, what we want to do now is uh, implement these force models for the two bodies to determine the two bodies depicted in figure 11 13 so that we can determine the contact force okay so let's first look at um, the contact models as described by equations 11 31 and 11 32 and depicted in figure 11 11 a now the stiffness K, which is, for example, in the linear model of equation 1131, can be determined based on the stiffness of the two springs as shown in the next equation. 
1135. Now the formula for equation 1135 can be obtained by realizing the forces that the two bodies apply on each other are equal in magnitude. Therefore the normal force will be equal to the stiffness of the first body multiplied by the deformation of the first body and that will be equal to the stiffness of the second body multiplied by the deformation of the second body. An equivalent spring with the stiffness k undergoing a deformation of delta equals delta 1 plus delta 2 should produce the same force. So in other words this force is now expressed as this single stiffness multiplied by the combined deformation. So um, you can follow the explanation, the rest of the explanation showing how uh, Prof. Nikravish got to equation 1135. Now in the presence of damping equations 1132 and 1134 as in equations 1132 and 1134 the two bodies separate at delta equals delta s okay and this is shown clearly here in uh, figure 11, 11, A and B. So you can note here on the, on the horizontal axis, here this is where delta S is indicated. So that's where the contact force is actually zero. But it's clear that the deformation or the penetration is not zero. Okay, and the reason for that is um, separation of the two bodies occur before they completely recovered from their deformations. All right. um, okay, so the spring model with the nonlinear characteristic of equation 1133 um, is, is known as the Hertz contact force model. And this follows from a publication by Hertz that was published in 1893. So the model considers st the stiffness to depend on the material property and local geometry of the contacting bodies. Now for example for two colliding spheres with radii R, I and R, J, the parameter K can be determined as. This is shown here in equation 1136, where V subscript K and E subscript K are the are Poisson's ratio and Young's modulus for, of each sphere respectively. And the exponent in equation 1133 is determined to be n equals 3 over 2 or 1.5. Okay, so what happens if one of the contacting surfaces is flat or has, in other words, a very large radius of rj equals infinity? Then equation 1136 becomes... Uh, and this is shown here in equation 1137. A revised form of damping for equation 1134 considers the damping coefficient to be a function of indentation as shown here in equation 1138. Now this model was derived by Hunt and Grossley in 1975 where the damping coefficient is now expressed as mu times the indentation to the power n and mu is called the hysteresis damping factor. Now substituting this description of damping coefficient in equation 1134 results in the following contact force model. This is shown here in equation 1139. Now figure 1114 illustrates a comparison between this contact force model, the solid line, and the force model of equation 1134. Um, and this 
is now indicated in the dashed lines. And we've already looked at these, um, this illustration of the force model of equation 1134 in figure 11.11b, .11 if I remember correctly. So anyway, so these two force models are superimposed here. And the reason for that is in the revised model, the contact forces at the start of the compression phase and at the end of the restitution phase are zero, which is quite different from the original model of equation 1134. So also in the revised model, since the contact force does not reach zero until at the end of the restitution phase, the bodies do not separate until the restitution is fully completed. Although the contact force model of equation 1139 has changed the physical characteristics of the contact, it, pro it provides a useful feature. It has been shown that the damping factor in equation 1138 can be expressed as a function of the coefficient of restitution, where such a function cannot be analytically cannot be found analytically for the damping coefficient of equation 1134. Okay, so what Prof. Nikravish is saying here is the fact that we now have an, an analytical equation for the damping coefficient, where previously for the model of equation uh, of um, equation 1134, we did not have a, an analytical equation expression for the damping coefficient. We simply had to select a value for that damping coefficient, plug the value into equation 1134 and calculate the normal reaction force. Now we have an analytical expression in terms of the um, deformation of the body. The coefficient of restitution is defined as the ratio between relative penetration speeds at the start of the compression phase and at the instant of separation. Okay, and these uh, relative penetration speeds are indicated as minus superscript minus delta dot and plus delta dot. And this is now the expression for the coefficient of restitution. This is shown here in equation 1140. And one description of the damping factor in terms of the coefficient of restitution has been suggested by um, Lankar, Lankarani and Prof. Nikravish. And this was done in 1990. Okay, and this is shown here in equation 1144. Now, substituting this, substitution of this expression in equation 1139 provides the following contact force model. And this is shown here in equation 1142. Note that equation 1142 assumes that during both the compression and restitution phases, delta is greater than 1, greater than 0, sorry, with a sign of the rate of change of delta or d delta dot is positive during compression. In other words, it's the same direction as that of delta and negative during restitution. A graphical description of this force model is shown in figure 1115. For values of the coefficient of restitution smaller than 1, the force penetration curve exhibits hysteresis behavior. And that you can see here for um, a value of the coefficient of restitution of 0 0.5. This is the dotted line. And the fact that there is a bubble, almost like a bubble or a leaf shape, that is um, showing that there is hysteresis involved here. Um, the area inside each hysteresis curve denotes the loss of energy during impact. 
for an elastic impact in other words where the coefficient of restitution is exactly equal to one the loss of energy is zero okay and that's now the straight solid line or not straight the solid line uh, obviously the area of that line is zero there's no um, leaf shape associated with that line in other words the relative speed at the moment of separation is equal to the relative speed at the start of contact now Typical values for stiffness parameter K are from 1 to 10 times 10 to the 10 Newton per meter to the power of 1,5. The coefficient of restitution can have a value of anything between 0 and 1. Now this power 1,5, where does that come from? Um, if I can just scroll back a little bit this comes from the fact that for nonlinear um, behavior we specified here in equation 11.33 that the normal force is the st stiffness coefficient multiplied by the delta to the power n and if you remember we mentioned that um, the the default value that you should use for n is 3 over 2 which equals 1,5 and um, that's why stiffness is now also presented in units of meter newton per meter to the power 1,5 and delta delta is then in um, also meter to the power 1,5 so in other words um, if those uh, units cancel out and then and the reaction force is then yielded in newtons the model of equation 1142 provides a better representation of contact for values of the coefficient of restitution e closer to 1,0 rather than values closer to zero this shortcoming of equation 1142 has been improved upon in the following force model and this is presented here by equation 1143 and um, 1143 follows from the work done by two sets of authors the first set published in 2009 and the second group of pub uh, authors published in 2011 now in this model the damping factor becomes larger compared to that of equation 1142 as the coefficient of restitution becomes smaller so just to um, explain that the damping factor is represented by these terms over here okay and if you if you do the maths you can see that the damping factor that we spoke about earlier in the lecture in the lecture is indeed represented by these um, terms over here and what we're saying here is that this damping factor becomes larger when as the coefficient of restitution e becomes smaller but we note that for the coefficient of restitution e equals zero the damping factor becomes infinity and therefore for computational purposes the coefficient of restitution should not be set exactly to zero but it could be a very small number okay so that's the theory behind two body contact and specifically the continuous analysis of two body contacts so we've got these two mathematical models uh, equation 1142 and 1143 um, let's now see how we apply these models um, to a representative example now we will look at the slender rod that is impacting ground and that we've introduced in the previous lecture now the system is a slender rod that moves vertically toward the ground as shown in figure 8.16 
Um, the rod has a length of 2 meters, a mass of 1 kilogram, and a moment of inertia of 0.01 kilogram meter squared. The rod is orientated at 45 degrees and its mass center is 1 meter off the ground. And its velocity at the orientation, at this orientation, is 6 meters per second downward in the vertical direction with zero angular velocity. For the contact model, the following parameters are used. Um, K is 10 to the 11 newton meter to the power 1,5 and we did discuss this 1,5 earlier. It's because of the non-linear um, coefficient that we've added to the um, stiffness uh, component of the uh, reaction force and then the coefficient of restitution is 0 0.95 so in this model the y coordinates of points b and c are monitored as soon as either point penetrates the ground the impact model determines a normal force and applies it to that point Okay, so let's have a look at exercise 8.13. Um, we need to simulate the response of this slender rod for two seconds and then do a few plots. Now, in order to, before we look at what we need to plot, um, let's just open the um, input M files and run through them quickly, run the simulation, and then we'll plot the results and discuss them. Okay, so I've opened all the input M files. Um, they are listed in alphabetic order in the file browser, and that's also how I've opened them. The first one is in animate, nothing strange there. We've specified the, there are no points anim to specify, and we've also um, specified the limits or the extremities of the animation window. Then the second input file is in bodies, and for this model there is a single body. The mass, moment of inertia, initial position, x and y coordinates, the initial orientation as 45 degrees, and the initial velocity. Um, x and y components are all specified, and these all tie up um, with what I've uh, read earlier the the mass one kilogram inertia 0 0.01 kilogram meter squared orientated at 45 degrees this pi over four um, the mass center is one meter off the ground so the y coordinate is one the x coordinate is zero um, its velocity is six meters per second downwards so that's where the minus six comes from Okay, so that all ties up with what we've uh, already uh, discussed. Then the in-forces, or the input file in-forces, there's weight and there's a user force. All right, so um, the user force, let's just quickly jump to that input file. All right, so the, the parameters for the contact model are listed here um, and this is as we've as Prof Nikravesh uh, suggested the, the values that he suggested is what we've are what we've entered here um, and now these the the contact function has the following input variables it's the contact index point index, body index, the K and the, the stiffness and the um, coefficient of restitution and then the model index. Okay, the model index, let's start from the end. The model index can either be 1 for equation 1142 or it can be 2 for equation 1143. And you're welcome to play with the different models to see what the influence is. Alright, so um, contact index, um, there are two of them, obviously, because we, we mentioned that um, we want to um, 
monitor contact at points B and C and that also ties then up with the point indices um, if I can jump to in points so uh, point P1 is both points are on body 1 point P1 is at local coordinates minus 1 so this is B then in other words uh, the local coordinate minus 1 and point C is at local coordinate 1 so um, yes positive right so um, then the next one is body index okay so both of them are on body 1 um, and that's it really I mean stiffness and uh, coefficient of restitution both of them are also there and we will work with uh, equation 1142 and this is also specified here we go this simple example demonstrates the use of continuous contact impact model as described in section 11 to equation 11.42. All right. So for reference purposes, we can also use 43. Um, but for this example, we will run with equation 11.42. Okay, so that's in forces. In funks is empty. In joints is empty. In points we've already discussed in u vectors is also empty okay so with that done we're ready to simulate the response now i've done the simulations offline and for two seconds the um, the slender rod actually um, it seems to be picking gaining energy so uh, we are asked to simulate the response of the model for two seconds but what I'm gonna do is only run it for one second okay so uh, in order to do that let's just clear clear the command window we enter DAP um, the folder is rot the final time is one and I'm going to make the reporting time step very small 0, 0, 0, 0 one second and I'll explain why in a little bit so with the very small reporting time step that we specified uh, I would not recommend you running an animation of this simulation because it will be extremely slow if you do choose to animate it. Um, the reason for the very small time step is specifically in order to pick up uh, uh, an instantaneous acceleration of the center of gravity of body one. But we'll get to that in a little bit. The reason why I did not run the simulation for two seconds but only one second is because I've noticed an instability at after around one and a half seconds. Okay, it may be a mistake on my computer, uh, but I did not investigate it further. I, the idea of this model is just to demonstrate the ability that Prof. Nikravesh has built in to simulate contact. Okay, the idea was not to do it to a high level of accuracy and taking into consideration the friction and all the other physics that come into play. That is also possible to do, but it is left for us as users to implement that, those reaction forces and friction etc. Uh, in the input file of whatever model you want to simulate. Alright, so with that said, um, let's plot the coordinate of the mass center of the rod in the y direction versus time. Now in order to do that we need to run the post processor. Okay so with that done we can then enter the command plot. Open the brackets t comma r for coordinates. Uh, we want all the reporting time steps. We want body one and we want the y coordinate which is the second coordinate and that's why we'll enter a two there close both brackets okay and there you can see the 
response in the y direction and this corresponds to the first part the first half of what prof nikravish is um, showing in his textbook as published in his textbook right so let's do the same for the velocity of the mass center in the y direction uh, in order to do that we just modify the command rd that's the velocities okay and if we open that and once again this corresponds nicely to the first half of the graph that Prof. Nikravish has published and now for the accelerations you will see uh, why I chose why I've chosen the um, the very small reporting time step the command is plot t comma r d d colon one comma two and here you can see this spike if you use a, a a bigger or a larger time step then you miss this peak acceleration okay and that's also shown here okay so simulation of the example this is how prof nikravesh wraps up this example um, simulation of the example in exercise 813 shows that the integration algorithm takes very small time steps the moment the rod contacts the ground resulting in a large computational time now this is due to the sudden application of a large contact force that causes a sudden jump in the acceleration of the rod okay and that's what you can also see here on the screen now if we simulate the problem of exercise 813 for a longer period of time to allow the rod to come to rest on the ground the integration time steps will remain very small this phenomenon is one of the drawbacks of this type of contact models such models represent the contact reasonably well when the relative velocity of the contact point is not too small when the bodies begin to remain in contact with each other a simpler linear spring damper contact model may be more suitable to replace the original contact model so that brings us to the end of the module and this lecture thank you very much for watching i do hope that you enjoyed it and that you will re recommend this module to your fellow students or colleagues thank you very much